Oh, he whiffed. What are you doing? There he is. There we go. There we go. Just gonna keep reeling. There he is. And that's what we like to see. Oh, I got him in the goal. You bet. <laughs> You bet. What is going on and welcome back. If we haven't met yet, my name is TJ Erickson. I'm a teacher and fishing guide based out of Park Rapids, Minnesota. And before you ask, yes, I did decorate this room myself and thank you. I know it looks amazing. I just got back from my trip up to the Sioux Narrows area of Lake of the Woods and I am going through some of the footage right now and I tell you what, Lakers are easily my favorite fish to target through the ice because of how aggressive they chase after your baits. One of the things that I learned, especially after watching back some of the footage, is that I have a lot to learn about lake trout and I can't wait to chase these things some more. Before we left, I had tons of great plans in place of exactly what videos I wanted to shoot while we were up there. but. Didn't take long before he ran into some slush, had battery problems, transducer problems, you name it. Anyways, we ended up having to change plans as we went and I wasn't able to get some of the footage that I would have liked to, but with that being said, I still did get some really cool footage and have some really cool live scope footage that I'm excited to share with you guys. So I'm going to show you some of the highlights from each day and give you a rundown kind of, of what we tried, how it worked, and some of the different things that I learned as I went. So I'm going to start with day one. Day one was easily our most action packed day, even though we got out fishing and quickly realized we weren't going to be able to fish many of the areas we wanted because of the slushy conditions. I kind of had to change my plans for how I wanted to film on the fly and didn't really get that dialed in until kind of the last day. So I missed some of the footage and didn't quite get the quality that I wanted, but the good news is that we quickly found a pattern that was working for us, and that was kind of the target, that 40 to 60 foot area flats that were either adjacent to a saddle, an inside turn, or a steep break. Once we were able to kind of figure out that pattern, we had some really good action. We even had about an hour or two stretch where we probably caught the majority of fish that day. So I'm gonna quit talking and I'm gonna show you a few of the clips from that stretch right here. No, oh, nope, he's not done. There he is. That's a decent one. Pull them up there. Hey, two. Sweet. Sweet. There we go. Sweet. He can put it back down. Sweet. Sweet. Nice work. Kicking my butt. Oh. He's in. oh yeah, he wants it. Giant. Not a giant. Not big, but it's a first one. Little one. Oh, there we go. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ugh. Well, I'm gonna get him back down because he was bleeding a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. Got the monkey off the back. Oh, he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back. Oh yeah. This one's not very big. Oh, he's chasing all the way up. There we go. A little bit bigger maybe. Golly, he's right underneath the ice. Nope. Had him right at the top of the hole. It was about the same size. Ooh, another one just whiffed. Oh, just gonna keep reeling. There he is. Oh, got back off. Oh, man. There we go. Oh, come on. Oh, he whiffed. What are you doing? There he bit it. Oh, he's right underneath. Coming close. He bit right underneath the ice. Ooh, there's my leader. Oh, it's so fun to see these things chase. I think I'm recording, yep. Oh, this one's just a hair bigger, I think. Whoa, got into some slush. There, we got him off. <laughs> nice. Oh, these are so much fun. Even these little bit smaller ones like this. Oh. Sweet. Well, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to get live scope footage here. I had to switch out batteries. My other one died. Kyle's using my other battery because 
his transducer broke on his Vexlar, so he's using my Helix. Um, and so I just want to make sure I have enough juice to last the rest of the day. So I don't think I'm going to have some live scope footage, which is a bummer because there's one chasing up right now. Oh, man. Oh, he darted up hard. So you're just going to have to visualize what's going on, which is a lot less fun than actually seeing it. Whoa, that one came out of nowhere. <laughs> that one came out of nowhere and just smoked it. I don't know how good of hooks I got into them here. Not a giant, but... Oh, <laughs> God, these lake trout are so cool. Okay, good, I am recording. I should tilt this down a little bit. Ooh, ooh there he goes for another little run. That is so much fun. Let's see what we got. Oh yeah, another decent one. There we go. Sweet fish. Man, that thing just came out of nowhere and just crushed it. Oh, that's so much fun. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Oh, geez. Hold on. I was talking to my friend Jeremy. He's up here and we're trying to get another transducer for Kyle. And as I was talking, that thing just came up and crushed it. But I didn't get hooks into him very good. He did come back and look. Oh, he's snagged. <laughs> That's why. Oh, <laughs> right, the right in the keister. This is trout number 10 if you're throwing it. Caught it in the butt. <laughs> I hit the eye, I think. I don't know what I'm on. Yep. There we go. Not a giant again, but another one that came up a lot more aggressively. Loosen up the drag a little bit for when he wants to take a run like that. There's my leader, so I'm getting close. Shoot. He might be off on the bottom. Oh no. So as you can see, we had some really good action and that was only a few of the fish that we had on camera. We did catch quite a few others that weren't on camera and I had my best luck on kind of a 40 foot flat that was on an inside turn. My buddy Kyle, he was catching his fish on kind of that 50 foot flat off of a steep break. One of the first things that I realized after watching some of the footage that I was definitely ready to catch some of those bigger fish. I had my 43 inch heavy rod. I was given a couple extra hook sets in there to bury that hook, but unfortunately that was not quite the caliber of fish that we were on on day one. And I definitely probably could have had a little better luck not losing some of those fish if I would have used a little bit lighter action rod that had a little bit more give, especially as I got towards the hole. But after that area slowed down, we made an absolutely terrible decision and we decided to move. And well, I'll just let you see how that went. Well, we are, uh knee deep in water and slush and everything and you can see Kyle trying to Baja across trying to find something dry and then we have this fun ahead of us oh every step you just oh break through and there is the sled just buried and we're not sure where to bring it out of here so hopefully we'll be out so after about an hour and a half of absolute pain and misery finally got out and decided to fish for just a little bit longer we were down to one unit because we had batteries die kyle's transducer for his vexlar bit the dust so we fished together for a little bit and ended up just catching one more for that day so we regrouped for day two and we had a better plan in place. I ditched my fish house so that I wouldn't get stuck as easily and I brought out the flasher so I could save some battery and make sure that I made it through the day. We started out targeting some of the same areas that we did the day before and we started out right. I caught one basically on my very first drop. Oh, 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 oh shoot. Oh, he's chasing. There we go. <laughs> Just got done filming that intro. We got hooked up. Oh, I was putting my mic away, so I almost missed it. I don't think it's very big. But, oh man, I literally just got done filming that intro. Oh, don't get stuck on the bottom of the ice. I think he's stuck on the bottom of the ice. Oh, they get so tricky when they get around the hole like this. Oh. He's taking some good runs there. It's so tough to get him up that hole. I do have a 10-inch hole, even. 
But even with that 10 inch hole, sometimes it's hard. I think we got him coming up. There we go. One more look and we will get him back down. Sweet start to the day. Not long after that, Kyle hooked up into a decent one and then we kind of kept bouncing around for a little bit. I hooked up into one more that got off. After that, we looked at the map and found a sweet looking spot. It was an awesome flat that was kind of between two steep breaks that looked like just a highway for those fish to cruise through. Well, finally got over to the spot and... Well, we've done it again. We are absolutely buried. Oh, Kyle is about knee deep. And every time you step through, it just breaks. Not good. That one was brutal. It took us four tries to finally get out of there. We were so gassed once we got out that we decided to put up the house and cook some lunch to regroup. Well, we survived. Yep. How's this gonna look? Wham! Does that look good? Certainly. <laughs> Is that gonna look good on the camera? Oh, we can see ourselves. <laughs> uh oh, get ready. I'm buzzing him. I'm buzzing him. He's following me down. Oh my gosh. Nope, he, I don't think he bit. I think I just got excited. <laughs> you think you got excited? Let's <laughs> shoot. Yep. <sighs> he's coming back for you still. I think he's on you. He's on you. Oh, he was chasing you. I'm going down. That's not me. That's not the fish. I can see your GoPro. Oh, here you go. Yep. Whammy. Little guy, thanks. Little one. Little one. Not bad, though. Oh, right mustard. in the mustard. And there's Kyle's fish right there. Not a big one, but fun nonetheless. After lunch, we bounced around quite a bit and fished pretty hard, but we just couldn't quite get anything else going for the rest of the day and ended up with only those three. But on day three, we decided to change game plans for a little bit and target some bigger fish for our final morning. I got the live scope and the good camera back out and I wanted to catch a big fish on the live scope. My buddy Jeremy was also out fishing in that area and they had a lot better luck catching some bigger fish. So we talked with him for a little bit and we realized that we're gonna have to try something, get a little bit out of our comfort zone and try something that we didn't really have a lot of confidence and that was fishing shallow. So we set our contour highlight from about 15 to 30 feet and only fished areas within that depth range. We were targeting some of the same type of structure that we were the day before, but we just stuck to that 15 to 30 foot range instead. We fished the first spot, saw some fish, but then we got to the second spot and before I could even get a line in the water, Kyle hooked up. Good one, you think? Good one. That's hard walking through that snow. Got your swivel. Oh boy, got him in the gullet. <laughs> Sweet. Oh, you bet. You bet. <sighs> Sweet. Ooh, look at Ooh, that one's got a gash too. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Yep. <sighs> you bet. Nice work. That first fish was huge for us because it gave us the confidence to kind of stick to some of that shallower water. I found another sweet area not too far from Kyle and I immediately started marking some big fish. But it didn't take long before Kyle was hooked up yet again, but this time he was a little bit farther away and a little bit too far for this washed up 30 year old that clearly doesn't turn down a good burger too often. I'm making it. I'm not making it. I'm drumming. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh, I'm tired. That's a good one. Oh, I don't know what my lighting's like. It's probably really bright. So after almost passing out for the run there, I made Kyle give me a ride back on his snowmobile and I decided that I was gonna move a little closer to him in case one of us caught a big one and needed a little bit of a hand. Well, as you guessed it, I ended up getting stuck again and while doing that, I heard Kyle yell that he hooked up yet again and it was a good one. You see him? Yeah. Come on. Come yeah, on. Yeah. Come on. Oh, oh. I think I've got him. There he is. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> you bet. I got him. I got him for you. Nice. 
stud. Oh my goodness gracious. Hey, do you want to take the thing out first or not? Sure. <laughs> you bet. Oh man, that is wow. just awesome. Oh, whoa. Look at this. Sweet thing. fish. Oh man, that is so cool. So basically, while I was getting stuck, dying from heat exhaustion, Kyle's over there sipping his coffee, catching three of the biggest fish of the trip so far. The action did slow down for a little bit after that, and it was getting close to about the time that we were gonna pack up when. Oh. On bottom. Big. I think, but nope, he just swam away. Um. Oh, he came and bit. Oh, I'm, I messed that up big time, I think. Yep, I had my chance and I messed it up. Plus, I found out that I didn't even have my main camera rolling anyways, so I'm not sure what would have made me more bad. Either way, it was just kind of that trip for me. Plans got changed, gear wasn't working, and it was just tough to regroup fish and still get the footage that I wanted. Either way, it was an awesome trip and I so badly want to get back up there before the end of the ice season because I feel like I finally have a little bit better plan in place to get some of the footage that I want and I know the potential for the fish that we could catch and the footage that we could get, especially some of that live scope footage. This was definitely a little different style of video than what I typically do, but I still hope you enjoyed watching and you were able to learn a little bit from my mistakes and also from my experience while we were up there. Well, I'm definitely getting the itch to get the boat out and get some open water content done, but with how this winter's going, I I just don't know when that's gonna happen. Who knows, might try to get some burbot content or maybe some late ice panfish content out before we lose ice, but just can't quite guarantee anything right now. But I hope you found some value in this video. If you did, I would love it if you would show your support by subscribing. It really helps me out a lot. As always, I super appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.